Ukrainian American Congresswoman stunts on the Democrats. I actually have to speak against this amendment and I'll tell you why. Because the stakes are too high. And I'm not going to talk on the behalf of the state of Texas, but I want to speak on behalf of the state of Indiana. It is a common use weapon to protect. And as a mother of two daughters, as a woman, I truly believe that is infringement of my rights. And I want to make sure that my children, my great children, and grandchildren and children of my constituents have the same rights to protect them. And I think we need to remind us what really happened in countries like Ukraine right now, that there are a lot of people probably would love to have something, you know, to protect themselves. And we know why we won our war, you know, against kings and queens and became a republic because our American people have these rights. If you don't have the rights and you have a police state or you can have bandits running the show. And I think that is very dangerous. This is, gives me a freedom as a woman. And I don't, you know, I, I, my concern is when we talk about this is issues of common use and unusual and dangerous weapons, my concern is what's happening in Afghanistan, what's happening right now in Europe. If we don't take control of some of the things, we'll have javelin and stingers in common use in our cartels, Mexican cartels that have a lot of money right now. And they're big buyers of weapons right now in the market. And we have an open border. It is a dangerous weapon, and we have to make sure that we deal with these issues and protecting our borders and make sure that we have proper oversight and not abandon dangerous weapons in Afghanistan. That was a disgrace, what we did. And it is going to can hurt our cities if we don't get our act together. And I think that is something we need to find the common ground to do. And if you look at the state of Indiana, we had the great example where we have some good red flag laws. And, you know, even though I have some concerns, we put some check and balances in that red flag laws. We had shooting and the red flag laws didn't stop because they're not getting enforced by the laws. And we had an unfortunately shooting. And we just recently had one where constitutional carry that stopped shooting, you know, that more people didn't die. So we have to think what works, what doesn't work, because this bill is really about taking the rights from law-abiding citizens. Wow, this is really impactful. So this is a woman named Victoria Sparts. She's from the great state of Indiana. She became a United States citizen in 2000, legally. Interesting, right? Um, she worked her way up from being a bank teller to a business owner to now a member of Congress. And I think her opinion is extremely valuable here. She's lived in a war-torn country and she's talking as a mother here saying that we need Second Amendment rights. And I think women in general have to be particularly cognizant of this. We already know, even though Democrats deny it, that men are stronger, faster, bigger, and more powerful than women. And the only equalizer, if we are attacked, starts with our Second Amendment rights. And in this prob country, we don't have a problem with guns. We have a problem with mental illness. That's the issue. It isn't about guns. The Democrats want to take our gun, all of them, guns, because they believe in tyranny. They believe that they are omnipotent and they want to control us. And one great way to control us is taking away our firearms. And let's talk about more gun control. In Chicago, they have more gun control in almost any city in America, maybe the most. One of the most violent and dangerous cities in our country. How's that working? Well, I'll tell you why. Because bad guys don't believe in background checks and getting guns legally now, do they? So it's only going to be if the Democrats have their way, the bad guys who have guns and the government who has guns. To me, that is an absolute recipe for disaster. Look what happened in Israel after October 7th. The population was completely powerless against the evil of Hamas. Those bad guys all had guns, and I assure you, they probably weren't allowed. These were illegal guns. So what did Israel have to do? change its gun laws, allow people in the former military to get guns, and mostly everyone in Israel has been in their military. We all know what's going on here, and we love people like this great congresswoman from Indiana to tell it like it is.